Oh, we're recording? Oh, okay. Ow! It's so cold. I'm gonna 
just begin our uh, video here in just a second. We only have 11 people here. Wow. Hmm. You know what? Let me write down who is here. Word of the day. Chancla. <laughs> oh, Chancla. Yeah, I'm sorry. That should be the first one. You'd think, huh? Oh, mm -hmm. they see me. Well, don't they fall? Like my team is really on the other side. I'm just coming in with my finger like this. Okay. Oh, it's so blurry. Hi, it's. Hold on, Doug. You want the. This music always helps me get my work done. Because, like, I'm always, like, on top of it. I'm in the Today, I want to tell you a true story. On a late November day in 2012, a fisherman named Jose Alvarenga set sail in his fishing boat off the coast of Mexico. For him, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. He expected to go out and cast his fishing nets and bring in a good catch for the day, which he would sell at market. That was how he made his living. But Jose Alvarenga didn't realize that things weren't going to be ordinary that day. A storm was forming off the coast. And very soon, he found himself stuck in the middle of it. His luck got even worse. The storm thrashed his boat about violently, damaging the boat's motor and all of his electronics. He was only able to get in one call back to shore to yell for help. But no one responded, and Jose became lost at sea. During and after the storm, the boat drifted in the wind and was soon blown very far off course. After two days of searching, rescuers gave up. But he was still alive. Jose Alvarenga is the longest known survivor at sea. He drifted it for over an entire year, from Mexico all the way across the Pacific Ocean. Eventually, he found himself over here in the Marshall Islands in the Pacific, where he finally was able to spot people and get help. How on earth did Jose Alvarez survive a year at sea? Think if you were floating on a boat all along with nothing. What problems would you face? What would you need to survive? Uh, Lynette, you're supposed to go with Miss Chanamoto. That's good. Okay, bye. Alright, All right, go ahead and answer the question. Uh, raise your hand. What do you guys think? What problems would there be? And then, what would you need to survive, Bella? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, like, you would definitely need water and food. Okay. Um. Anyone else want to add? Water and food, yes, okay. Okay, so you could eat fish, but doesn't that create a problem? How do you catch fish? You can't, you can't eat fish by yourself, you need to cook it. What? You can't eat, you okay. can't eat fish by delivery. So what other problems delivery. might there be? Are those? You have to cook it. Well. Okay. Go ahead, Carlos, what? Fire to cook fish? Yeah, you need something to cook with, right? And to purify the water. Oh, so you're in the ocean. Why can't you just drink ocean water? Oh, 
It's too salty. Yep, because it's salty. Like what people are mad. Adrian, camera needs to be on. Yes, please. Sit down properly, please. Okay. So, we need water to survive, and you guys kind of already answered that. Is it a problem? And you guys said yes, because the water is salty, and it would need to be somehow not salty. So, what could, what do you think, like, how would this guy get water? Learn how to, uh, learn how to be an I'll clarify. Oh, like, fishermen have because he made my good I'm talking to you oh, a uh, straw purifier. Okay, this was not at a time where there was a straw yeah. purifier, and he can't just drink the ocean water with his hands. What do you think he did? He, maybe he got it. Maybe he crossed the uh, Bermuda Triangle. Okay, Jose? Oh, oh, I can smell it from here. He could drink the water, the rain, and then he could drink rainwater. Good job. But then heat was a problem. Ooh, How are you gonna make a fire in the rain? This is true. I don't know. Okay, let's listen. Think if you were stranded at sea like this, what problems would you face? The biggest issue of all is food. You could actually starve to death. On average, a person can only go three weeks without eating. During the storm. Jose Alvarenga had lost most of the fish he'd caught, as well as his fishing supplies. Amazingly, though, he managed to find and catch ocean creatures with his bare hands. Wow. He didn't get to be picky about what he ate. That included things like jellyfish and sea turtles. What other problems would he face? You might be thinking of sharks. Luckily, even though his ship was damaged, he still was able to stay on it. So the possibility of shark attack was very low. The biggest problem of all might surprise you. Water. As in water to drink. Now, you might be thinking, what do you mean? There's no problem there. Like I say, he's surrounded by an entire ocean of water. Every direction he looks, that's the water. But not all water is the same. There's actually different kinds of water. Ocean water is salt water. Water that has salt in it, just like the salt you put on your food. Now, surprising as it may be, human beings and most land-dwelling creatures actually cannot survive on salt water. After drinking more than just a few glasses, the salt that's in the water soon overwhelms the body. Despite the fact that it contains water, there's too much salt in it. Drinking salt water actually makes a person sick rather than helps them. Now, Jose was able to solve his water problem pretty easily. Every time it rained, he collected the rainwater using containers he had on board his ship. Rainwater, water that falls from the clouds, does not have salt in it. It's what we call fresh water. Well, that doesn't mean fresh as in new, just that it's plain water. It does not contain salt. So we need fresh water to survive, water that has no salt in it. This is the water we get from our faucets. Now, most of us cannot survive longer than three days without taking in enough fresh water. Hopefully, none of us will ever have to face such a difficult situation as Jose Alvarenga did. But imagine if water suddenly became something you did have to worry about finding. How would your life be different? Besides the fact that you can't survive longer than three days without fresh water to drink, what other ways do you depend on water in your life? Take a few moments and try to come up with as many ways as you can think of. Okay. What other ways do we use water? Um, think of what everyday things that you do and how you use water. Yes, we use it to drink, but what else do we use water for? Wash dishes. Gigi? To water the plants. Okay, we use water to water the plants. So then he probably wasn't having any fresh vegetables or fruit, right? Uh, Andrea? We use water to cook. We use water to cook, definitely. Um, Valeria? 
wash dishes? To wash dishes, uh huh. Because if you leave things, so if he's eating on his dish and it's um, dirty and he doesn't get to wash it, bacteria and mold can grow, and that's not safe or healthy, Leslie. To take a shower, right? I mean, imagine how dirty he must have been if he wasn't able to take a shower. Carlos, what do you think? If he went fishing, or the fish that he caught, then he would need fresh water to clean the fish. Ooh, yep, he needs to clean the fish, right? You're not going to just eat it, like, catch a fish and take a chomp out of it. That would be yucky. So he needs to be able to clean the fish. Jaden? To wash clothes. To wash his clothes, so not just his body needs to be washed, clothing needs to be washed. What else do we think? Anyone else have another one you want to add? Andrew, did you have a different one? To wash his hands. Wash his hands, yep. Um, no one said it. The first thing I thought of was to brush his teeth. Maybe that's just the mom and me. No toothpaste, though. I mean, maybe he had toothpaste, but even brushing your teeth with just water is better than not doing anything at all, right? I just think of, like, his teeth after a year of, you know, not being able to brush them, how not clean they were. Probably didn't even have enough toothpaste to clean his teeth for a year. Probably not, but it's still better to brush them with water than nothing. Okay. So, how much water do you think that you and your family use in a day? So, let's imagine everyone at your house, um, and let's, you know, just a normal house of, like, moms and dads and siblings or whoever's in your house. Um, how much water do you think you guys use in a day? Think of every time you use water. So you wake up. What's the first thing you do when you wake up? You drink water to wake yourself up. Okay, so you drink water. Brush your teeth. Brush your teeth. Um, honestly, the first thing most people do when they wake up, and don't be weird about it, but is you use the restroom. Right? I mean, really, like, oh, oh my gosh, it's not gross. Every, I would be more concerned if, if you didn't use the restroom. It's not gross to say that you use the restroom. So you use the restroom, right? And what do you do after you use the restroom or the toilet? You flush it, right? You're supposed to. If you don't flush the toilet, your moms will thank me. Um, you flush the toilet right there is using water. Then you probably wash your hands. Hopefully you wash your hands after you use the toilet. That's very important. Then maybe after that you brush your teeth. Then you go to the kitchen, get some water, wake up. Then you make yourself some breakfast. Whatever you're cooking, maybe you need to use some water. Okay? Or to use water like four times. Then you go to school or you stay home, whatever it may be. And you use water several other times in the day. Anytime you use the restroom, you take a shower, um, wash your hands, cook, and then obviously not even including the water we drink. And then things like watering your grass if you have a lawn, watering plants if you have plants, things like that all takes water. So probably a lot, right? So what are all the ways you use water besides the fact that you need to drink it regularly? Well, for starters, maybe you're not someone who drinks just plain water a lot. And so the thought might have crossed your mind. I don't even drink that much water. I drink other things instead. Maybe you drink a lot of juice. But every drink we have, whether juice or tea or soda or coffee, all of these are actually mostly made of water. So you're getting water every time you drink something, regardless of your favorite beverage. How else do you use water, though? You may have thought about the fact that you bathe yourself to stay clean, whether at or shower. So every time I 
soda is healthy? Because they water. Oh, you know, there's the toilet. Every time you flush, that's water. There's really important other ways you use fresh water, though. Ways that are hidden to you. Did you think about your food itself? Think about everything you eat. Where does it come from? It's water. grown or it's raised on a farm. Every living thing you eat, whether plant or animal, needed fresh water to survive and grow. That's still water that you rely on, even though you didn't drink it directly yourself. Every Christian had to stop. The average American family uses not one gallon of water, but more than 60 gallons of fresh water. Oh my goodness, that's every day. Having access to fresh water is something we take for granted. To us, it's as simple as turning on the faucet. And yet, it's so important to us. We rely on it in so many ways every day. You know the ocean contains salt water, not fresh water. And that rain is fresh water. Where else is there fresh water, though, besides the rain? You might know that lakes and rivers aren't salty. They contain fresh water. Maybe you also know that snow and ice aren't salty. So technically, they're fresh water, too. They're frozen. Fresh water is so important to us. But how much fresh water is there in the world? You're going to find out in today's activity. So, in the world, our Earth, we have both fresh water and we have uh, salt water. How much, like, so let's say, there's a hundred percent. How much do you think of that a hundred?